Hello everybody and welcome back to the Games on Quick Hot Fix. This is How to Train a Speedrunner and tonight we have Whiplash. Uh, before we learn that though, just a few quick announcements. Uh, we have one in Dunathon coming up again. That's where you can show off your favorite run and then that's your only appearance in the one in Dunathon series. Uh, the schedule for that is going to be released on July 29th, so you can keep an eye out for that. And then also we have Frame Fatales, which is going to be having its next all women speedrunning event, Flame Fatales, from August 21st to 27th. The marathon schedule is out now. You can type exclamation FF in Twitch chat, or you can go to gamesandquick.com slash frankpals for more information on that. Uh, Pride submissions are also open now, so you can check the site for information on that as well. Uh, with all that said, uh, we've got Jaxler here. How are you doing today, Jaxler? Or tonight, I guess. I'm doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. Excited to bring you folks some whiplash tonight. Uh, so like Church said, I'm going to be showing you how to speedrun whiplash tonight. Um, if you've never heard of this game before, if you've heard of the Gex games that have been memed to death, now, uh, in recent memory, uh, this is the game that Crystal Dynamics made after they made Gex. Um, it's available on PlayStation 2 and Xbox, but I will be running it on the Xbox version today. Uh, Xbox is a bit faster on loading time, so that's why I choose it. Uh, but everything I'm going to be showing you tonight is doable on both versions as well. So if you don't have uh, like an Xbox, or but you have a PS2, just play on PS2. Play on whatever you have access to. Um, that being said, um, I want to go ahead and show you how to get a file set up. Um, so, in order to, um, so for this game, uh, time starts on first input rather than when we like make a new file uh, because there's like a three minute long cutscene. We're gonna watch the cutscene because it's hilarious this time around. Um, but you have to watch the cutscene at least once to set up like a speedrun save file for this. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to. Uh, we're gonna start by like showing you how to set that up. Um, so. Just pick any one of these files you have in here. Uh, on, I, I'm obviously doing this on Xbox, so I'm not exactly sure how you would set this up the same way on PS2, because they have memory cards and all that jazz. Um, but if you have any questions on that, I'm sure I'd be able to help you walk uh, through that as well. Um, so for Whiplash, just hit select. Pick an icon of your choice. I'm going to pick the red bunny. Then hit B. I, for whatever reason on the menus, they make you confirm with A and then confirm again with B. It's really annoying. Um, and it's going to autosave, and then it's going to load us into the game here automatically. And so, then we need to sit through uh, this cutscene before we can set up the um, speedrun file. And as soon as we gain control of our character, we're going to pause so we can start setting up the file. Um, but in the meantime, we get to watch one of my favorite opening cutscenes in any game I've played in a while. Um, which is the flash opening cutscene, so I will just uh, let you all enjoy. So again, this was made by Crystal Dynamics, the same people who made the Gex games. Um, so it kind of has that same sort of sense of humor. It's another 3D platformer game, but instead of uh, it being tail time, uh, we control uh, Spanx and Redmond, who's a bunny. I don't know what kind of creature Spanx is, uh, but they are bound together by, uh, by a chain, and we can s swing our rabbit friend around as we control some sort of, like, Creature. I don't know what kind of creature Spanx is. Anyway, enjoy the cutscene. Life is boring. Reality doesn't cut it. Doesn't your everyday routine just sap your soul? Don't you wish life had more zest, more verve, more, I don't know, elan? Well, now there's meaning to your awkward existence. The Genron Corporation. Genron is dedicated <laughs> to bringing you the most exciting product inside of your face. No idea is too grand. <laughs> No technology too advanced. We're about you. All about you. <laughs> look, just look. Isn't that fantastic? And what about this? Doesn't that make you smile a big one? But how in the name of science do we do it? Lean in close. The secret is animals. Is animals. Yes. Yeah, so this is kind of a bit of a weird game where it's like, instead of, uh, like, it's like one of those, like, science animal testing facilities but we play the animals and we're trying to bust everyone out of the facility and basically in casual play you cause a tremendous amount of property damage and it's a really good time um but this is kind of explaining the big bad which is generon there's our characters right there i pointed it at the screen as if you could see what i was pointing at <laughs> i hate do that I do that all the time i do that constantly Yeah, so again, the reason why we set up this file is so that we can essentially set an autosave past this cutscene so that every time we do a run, we don't have to watch, sit through and watch this cutscene. Even though it's really funny, we don't have to watch the cutscene every time. We're out! 
This is like one of my favorite parts of the cutscene too, just like the title cards here. <laughs> it says he's a Gemini. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, he's a weasel. Okay. There you have it. And he's a Leo, apparently. All right. So as you're uh, doing this part of the cutscene, you're, we're going to jump into the tube. And then as soon as we gain control on the tube, you're just going to kind of mash the pause button until you get the game to pause. You can also hold back as well so that you don't fall further into the tube. And then from here, we're going to go set up our preferences. Um, so go to preferences here. Um, make sure auto save is enabled. Um, this is really, really important uh, because if at any time you like die or game over uh, and you don't have an auto save, it'll just take you to the start of the game. Uh, so make sure that you have auto save on. Uh, from here, you can also change your uh, camera direction. Some people like inverted, some people don't. Uh, this is one of the rare games from this era that actually allows you to toggle it in the menu. So change that to your preference. Uh, again, it's just preference, so just choose whatever is most comfortable for you. Make sure auto enter combat camera. Make sure this is off. This will cause lots of problems if you have this enabled. So make sure that this is off. Uh, controller vibration, doesn't matter. Take your pick. Make sure you set the uh, difficulties normal by default. We really don't want that. Hit left on the D. Uh, you do all the menus with the D-pad on Xbox. So just hit left on the D-pad, set that to easy. And then max your brightness all the way up. Um, it, it For some reason it was even maxed. So this is what default brightness kind of looks like. Crank that all the way up. Uh, this is going to make it easier to see when we're doing some out of bounds sections later. So make sure that you do that. Um, and then once you have all of those settings, press the, the that accept edits button. Don't just like mash the button here. Uh, for me, that's Y, so just press Y. And then once you're done with this preferences uh, menu, go ahead and go to the hyper snacks menu here. And you're going to turn auto distribute on and then hover over where it says Spanx. And we're just going to completely drain it. So essentially what we're doing, and I'll explain this as we get further in, is we're, um, whenever we get hyper snacks, which is kind of like the experience point system in this game, we're setting it up so it automatically distributes all of it to Redmond. And Redmond is our source of damage. And if we were to give any to Spanx, it would just increase our max HP. Um, so we want to maximize attack power in this run, so you're just going to give all of that to, to uh, Redmond there. And then just hit Y to exit out of that menu. And then just for safety, you can hit save again there. But you see that uh, Generon logo with the test tube down there? That means we got the auto save. And then there's this check uh, this checkpoint down here that you want to hit. And you can just, if you're not sure you have auto save on or not, just manually save there. And this is where the run will start. Um, but we're not actually going to start here yet. I'm actually going to log out of this file here. Um, because I want to show you a couple of, of other things with regards to the files as well. And then I'm going to show you the main speed tech, which is triple and quad jumping. Um, so once you have this speedrun file set up, what I recommend doing is hovering over select and then pressing it so that you have like that white line outline around the file. And then just copy this a bunch of times, just AB on multiples of these files. Because there have been several instances where I've accidentally deleted my speedrun file on accident because I didn't realize I was hovering on delete. And just deleted it like that. And so every time you want to do a run and you've overwritten your speedrun save, what you can do is you can just select one of these backups. And select this new file up on top. Copy it. And then you'll have a new copy of your save file on the topmost slot. And ideally you want to be doing your runs on this first save slot because there's going to be a, a moment where we're going to be reloading the game and your quick start option on the main menu will actually load your top save by default. So it just saves a little bit of extra uh, hassle in menuing. Um, so I know we've been talking a lot about saves and menuing and stuff, but this stuff's really kind of helpful because um, this game is really, really hard to speedrun. I'm just going to warn you in advance. Um, but, you know, that's the whole reason why we're doing this uh, on... Uh, a train of speedrunner is because I don't want to have to have anybody else have to learn off of like nine year old world records to learn how to do the speed tech. So, uh, with that being said, I'm actually going to load into a different file to teach you how to do uh, the main like glitch slash movement tech that we're going to be doing throughout the game, uh, which is called triple jumping. Uh, there's a variant of it called quad jumping, but we're just going to start with triple jumping for now. So, in this game, you have a basic double jump like that, and then if you hold the A button, or the jump button, you get a hover. And with triple jumping, you can get a third jump. 
and it looks something like this. So you see how I got like way more height there? So for example here, this pillar right here, can't jump on top of it with two jumps. Three jumps, I get way on top of it, and I can almost get up to the even higher one up here, and I could probably with a quad jump. Oh, you can. Okay, cool. Um, so as you might guess, uh, that lets you get a lot of height, and that is very, very useful all over the place in this game. Um, so how does it work? Um, so one thing to keep in mind is that um, a lot of games from this era, the longer that you hold down the jump button, the uh, higher into the air you'll jump from any given jump. If I just tap the A button, uh, Sphinx will just do these short little hops. But if I hold it, see you how know, he's kind of floating in the air a lot longer? That applies to your second jump as well. Okay? So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so what we're actually doing here is doing a jump and then doing a kind of animation cancel that tricks the game into thinking we're on the ground while we're in midair. So the inputs for this are as follows. So A is your jump button, X is your light attack button, so it does this, and then B is your heavy attack. So the inputs for getting the glitch triple jump are AXB, and then you can jump from there, so like that. Um, now actually doing that is a little bit tricky. The way that I, the, from a technique standpoint, the way that I do this is kind of where um, like my thumb, like joint knuckle is. I put like the base of my my thumb on the A button, so that way that my X button can be right on, uh, right on, under like the like the tip of my thumb. So I kind of have both of those buttons covered by my thumb, and they're both easily pressable. And so the first part of the motion is I kind of in it, like instead of just pressing straight down, I kind of press with the joint of my thumb. Kind of like that. And then finish the motion of pressing down with the rest of my thumb. So I press with the base of my thumb and then the tip of my thumb. Like that. And what that'll do is you'll instantly jump and then instantly light attack while midair. So like that. That's the first step. And then immediately after you hit the X button, you need to roll your thumb to the B button. So what I like to do is once I hit the X button, kind of roll my thumb so instead of like being right down on top of it i kind of rotate so i can hit the b button with the side of my thumb like that all right so what i recommend doing with this trick is practicing it in steps so start with just getting the x and the b getting that timing down and then add the roll to b you do the x and a and then roll to b as fast as you can and when you hear that kind of grunt sound, that's how you know you got it. So once you do that, after you hit the B button, you can just press jump again. So it looks kind of like this. Like that. Now, again, keep in mind that the longer that you hold down the A button, uh, the higher that you'll jump. So after you press the B button, you don't want to mash the A button. Because if you do, you won't get as much height. Um, and in some spots, that can be the difference between whether or not you make a skip happen or not. So, the other thing as well is you can either do it immediately out of an X, or you can delay the X press a little bit. It's a little bit harder that way, but sometimes that can be useful. Um, but most of the time, you're just going to want to imme immediately do the AXB. Just try to make sure you're doing it all in one smooth motion. Um, if you're wondering the reason why I'm doing it in this room, but like literally like a second into the start of the run, you do a triple jump and doing it inside the slidey tunnel is a little weird to like do instead of just doing it in a room where the camera's consistent. So just before anyone asks, um, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, XIB gets you a triple jump. Didn't think so. And then once you have the inputs down, what you can start practicing doing is starting to move around while doing this. So one of the things you have to keep in mind with triple jumping is that there has to be a surface, like a floor, close enough under your feet for the glitch to work. So if I like, like ran off the edge like that, it's not going to work. Um, because, because of like a sort of safeguard mechanism to prevent players from infinite jumping, there has to be like a floor 
a certain distance below you for this animation cancel glitch to work and give you your jumps back. Um, it just so happens that uh, how far you need to be above the ground is actually pretty lenient. Um, so you can actually like get like a full jumps worth and still get the glitch to work. Um, so what you have to be careful of is before, if you're doing some precise platforming for this, say, let's say for example, I want to jump from this lamp to that post. I need to make sure I get my triple jump and then start moving. So triple jump, then you start moving. Triple jump, then you can start moving. So as soon as you hit that B button, you can start moving. All right, so that's triple jumping. Um, I'll introduce it here as well, just in case I forget. Um, but with triple jumping, you can also do something called a quad jump. Um, so I alluded to this a little bit earlier, but you can actually throw in a second jump in there if you're fast enough. And that gets you to the maximum height threshold possible if you throw in two jumps at a very specific timing, where you can still get the, the extra double jump, um, but you get uh, even more height than you would with just a triple jump. So this is a triple jump. This is a, a quadruple jump, or a quad jump. Just like that. And you see, I, I scale all the way to the top here. Um, just like that. And so, in order to do the quad jump, um, and we'll see some more examples of this later, um, there's not too many of these that you have to do, so we'll just go over it briefly here. Um, but what you want to do is tap the A button first before you do a triple jump input. So tap... Oh, I missed the... It didn't jump for some reason. Tap, boom. Yeah. So tap, triple jump. Tap, triple jump. Tap, triple jump. So essentially the quad jump, it's the same thing as a triple jump, but you just do a tap jump right before, and then you do a normal triple jump. Just like that. So basically the triple jump and the quad jump are going to be pretty fundamental to doing almost anything in this run. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I uh, gave as many like examples with the hand cam here as best as I could um, in order to give you folks an idea because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the run makes use of these almost immediately. Um, so like I said, um, I already have the save file set up. I'm just going to go ahead and, and hop into the game and I'll show you where this puts you. Um, so this puts you back in the tunnel right where we started after the end of that cutscene up here. Uh, one thing that I'll note here as well is that um, if you you can you, if you want to you can watch the full cutscene at the start of every run. I don't care, um, but if you choose to be smart <laughs> and do the speedrun file, uh, what you can actually do is start your timer on a delay. Um, so what you can actually do is instead of uh, if you go into like live split for example, you can actually change the timer from starting at zero to starting at like a negative time interval, so that by the time that you gain like the first frame of control, um, your timer starts for you. And so you don't need to like time it to when you gain control, you just time it when you press load into the file. And so what I actually do is I set my timer at minus 5.40 seconds. And that'll line it up perfectly with your first frame of input if you set up the file the way that I did. Um, okay. So first bit of actual gameplay, I guess. Uh, I mean, we talked about the first major glitch, um, triple jumping, but now we're going to actually put it to use. So if I were to go all the way down this tunnel, I would go straight into a really long, unskippable cutscene. And so the way we can skip this is we can actually double jump up onto this thing. And now keep in mind, this thing is slippery. So if you want to chill up here, you have to, um, you have to keep jumping. But from here, you can actually do a triple jump through the ceiling. And so I'm actually used to doing this like with momentum. Um, and I think it's a little bit easier that way as well. So double jump up here. And then you land down here. Okay. So this is going to require you to practice that thing I was showing you earlier, where as soon as you hit the B button, you can start moving. Um, you don't want to move too early, otherwise you're just going to fall off this little barrel thing here. So what I look for here is as soon as I get the triple jump, 
I start holding left. And then between my first and second jumps, I start holding up and to the right. And that's what gets me up and through the ceiling of this tube here. Um, it's, pre it's a pretty generous aperture to get through. Um, I'll show you what it looks like again at speed. I get a little bit higher on here. Again, I'm used to kind of like just doing this, like as soon as it loads in, just like, boom. You see, as soon as I get those kind of two jumps, I can kind of just start holding right, and you're good to go. And then once you get the clip through the tunnel, you want to start holding forward. Okay. And so what this is going to do is actually put you in a vent that is right below this tunnel. So see how I start kind of holding forward, flash up into the right? That puts you right into the servant right here. Okay. And this will put you past where that cutscene was. So there's like a whole bunch of other vents as well that you're supposed to go through normally. That just lets you skip all of it. So let me show you this one more time at full speed and then we'll move on. I want to make sure I go over this one a bit more specifically than some of the other triple jumps because this one's a little bit harder than all the others. So if you can do this one, you can do any triple jump in the game, I swear. Um, just do it like that. A little up into up into the right. Ah, I was so, so right there, I was too up into the right. So I just completely missed the air event. That's a pretty common mistake to make there, even if you get the out of bounds, is if you're going too far to the right. Uh, you'll just completely miss the platform. One, two, three. Hold forward. Boom. All right, and then from here, hit the beep. Uh, this is where we can start sprinting. So left trigger, the sprint is what I recommend doing, because if you use right trigger, um, not only are you doing all of the um, like triple jump inputs on your right hand, but then you'd also be doing it while like while sometimes holding down this button. Your right hand is going to get real tired if you do that, so use your left trigger. It'll save your hands in the long run. Break this vent, and then you just go into this cutscene, and then hit the start button. And then right here, we're going to go beat up the scientists. So uh, scientists have a random drop chance of dropping uh, hyper snacks, which we need to upgrade uh, Spanks the Rabbit. Um, so I'm just going to hold down left trigger, run up to this guy. X, 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 B, X, 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 B, and then just whack the snot out of him until um, he doesn't give you any more hyper snacks. Um, so the X, 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 B combo will actually put him into the air, and then he won't be able to block your attacks. If he starts blocking your attacks, just strafe a little bit into the camera. So just like go a little bit away from him, let him like take a karate chop, and then go for it again. So X, 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 B. Three X's and then a B. So that's light, 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 strong. I guess if you're playing on PS2. And then once you got him knocked down and you see the stars above his head, sometimes his head is clipped into the floor. That just happens. Um, take as many hyper snacks from him as you can. Uh, these scientists can drop anywhere from zero to four hyper snacks. And uh, the hyper snacks of higher value or like of like more quantity tend to be lower in percentage. So it's not like an even spread of like zero to four. Um, so we got two there. Um, what we're trying to do over the course of the run is keep track of extra hyper snack drops that we get from enemies. Uh, ideally, we get a, a minimum of six. If we get six, that'll get us to Spanx level four and let us greatly speed up the final boss fight. If you don't get level four, that's totally okay. Um, but that's something to keep in mind as you start getting better is to keep track of your hyper snacks count. So we got two from that first scientist. So we're going to go over here, across this way, and there's another scientist down here. There's three scientists in this sort of first area here. Um, oh, he moved all the way over here. One, two, three. One, two, three, B. And you can see he's dizzy now. And then once you see the disease, that means he's done and he's not going to give you any hyper snacks. Unfortunately, he didn't give us any here, um, but we still have two hyper snacks, so that's pretty good. And hold down L2 to scurry along here. Um, as soon as you go off the rail, jump and then mash X. Just kind of to make your way through here, and then you can zip across with the X button. And then immediately turn. One, two, three, B. One, two, three, B. Alright, so he gave us one, so we have three total. We need another three, and I can show you some places where we can get some more later. Um, right here, uh, just hit Y, and then press start to skip the cutscene, and walk at the door. And then keep holding L2. Oh, uh, sorry, L2. I'm 
pretending like this is a PlayStation 2 version. Um, and you're just gonna keep going until you get to these pipes. And then from here, you can do a triple jump and pretty easily get up to here. It's almost possible to just double jump up here, um, but you're gonna want the height from a triple jump just to get up onto these pipes. So I'll show you one more time. This one's really, really straightforward compared to the previous one. Triple jump up to here, and then you can just jump through the glass. It just lets you do that. Um, and then hit this lever and skip the cutscene with the start button. Then hop down here, and then we can make our way through the door here. All right, so you're gonna wanna make sure you're springing through here. Uh, so in the top left corner, there's actually a sprint bar. Uh, that's something you're gonna wanna be uh, keeping a track of when you're running this game for the first time, because if you run out of, similar to like Dark Souls, um, if you let yourself run out of stamina, you can't sprint until it fills all the way back up. Uh, so you wanna try to sprint until you have just a little bit of stamina left and then stop sprinting and let it recharge. All right, so this triple jump is technically optional. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway because it's swag. Otherwise, you would just do the casual route of going into the security guard's office and hitting the button. Um, so do a triple jump and then hold to the right. And if I jump here, you can see I kind of land on this thing. And then from here, once you get up here, you can do another triple jump towards uh, that farther door, like the one over here. Triple jump up here. Hold four while you're doing your next triple jump and then you're good to go. And then you should land in here. Okay, so this is a, a th so there's gonna be a couple of quad jumps that I'm going to show mostly for documentation. Uh, there are several of these quad jumps that you really should not learn on your, or go for on your first run, uh, but I'm gonna show you them anyway if, uh, uh, to be cool, right? Um, so uh, this uh, grinder right here is the normal way you open this door, but you can actually skip it if you do a quad jump from here. So do the quad jump, and then as soon as you get your 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 uh, glitch double jump going, then you can start moving. If you look if you if you look up top here, there is a blue lamp up there, sort of as like a ceiling accent light. That has a solid hitbox, and that's what we're gonna try to jump on here. Two, and then you land on here, and then you can just jump around the door and then back in bounds and skip it that way. Again, I'm, I'm only going to show that one once because you realistically, you should not be doing that your first run. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, so from here, this is pretty straightforward movement. Just hold L2 and then jump. Make sure you jump over the lasers uh, because otherwise the enemies can kind of be a little bit of a pain and get in your way sometimes. But again, keep an eye on that stamina meter in the top left corner. And if you need to refill, sometimes the best way to let your stamina recharge is either just walk or take a jump. Too lazy to play with it. And then once we get here, uh, the, the casual way to do this is just to break this thing that says security active. Uh, but the swag strap for skipping that is to do a triple jump onto here. And then you're kind of uh, on sort of like the left side to the left of this. Um, so if I jump here and I can see that I can uh, double jump, that means I'm in the right spot. If I get kind of stuck and can't move to the left, I'm in the wrong spot. You kind of want to jump out from the security console here. And again, we're going to jump on these accent lights that are on the side of this hallway. Then you can jump up here. And so normally this floor is full of pressure pads that close the security door, but then you can just jump to here. Okay, so there is a strat that I found earlier today. You should not go for this, but I'm going to show it anyway and show you the normal way of doing this. Um, both require quad jumps. I'm gonna show you the beginner version as well, which is a lot easier. So again, normally you use the bunny grinder here, um, but there's an accent light that's hidden up here that you can use. You have to get a good height quad jump in order to reach it. What I like to do is I like to stand to, so there's uh, one tile, two tile, three. Stand on the left edge of the third and do a quad jump. And then at the very tippy top, I start to move for the accent light. I can probably get a little closer, actually. One thing to keep in mind with any glitch jump, whether it's a triple jump or a quad jump, is you don't want to be hugging a wall. Because in general, when you're hugging a wall, you lose some of your uh, vertical momentum. And that can cause you to, for like this example, not make it up there. Um, 
So if you manage to get the quad jump to get up here, again, this is a new strat. I'm mostly just showing this off for documentation purposes. Um, you can do a triple jump from here and land on a platform that's partially out of bounds here. And this is how you would get out of bounds in this next sort of room. Um, but most of the time you're going to go through the grinder and then, oh, there's no floor remaining here. Fascinating. Uh, I'm going to take the, take the checkpoint reload and you'll just get to uh, see another example of all this movement again. Um, so that's like the really like fast way that I found the other day. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and double back through this movement here and show you a faster example of that security console triple jump I just showed. Um, and then I'm going to show you the normal way of getting through that section, um, which is through the bunny grinder and then uh, an out of bounds, which I think anybody learning this for the first time can do. Um, again, with like any speed games, these are going to take practice, um, but this one is a, like way, way safer and way easier. Um, but we'll go ahead and do the bunny grinder. Uh, the way that these work is you kind of just want to make, like, just kind of wiggle back and forth to just make sure Banks is roughly standing up. There's no, like, faster or slower way to do this. Just make sure you don't rip the bunny out too early. And then you can run in here and press start. Um, so if you have, like, a really low hyper snacks count, this can be a potential place to stock up. Um, generally speaking, uh, for like high level world record attempts, we tend to already have all six of the extras we need by now. Um, but we can go ahead and harass the security guard here. Um, so again, if he's blocking your attacks, um, just step back and uh, let him do an attack. Alright, so that's two. I'll go ahead and beat out one more security guard in here, and that should give me the last one I need if I can find one. All right, so he gave us the sixth one there, so we have all the ones that we need in order to finish the run. Um, so that's good news. Uh, again, if you don't get enough there, so if you still don't have six, uh, first of all, that's really unlucky. Uh, but second of all, um, I can show you a couple more places, um, but those are the places that you're going to want to look for hyper snacks. Um, okay, so similar to what I was alluding to earlier, there is an out of bounds that we can do in this room through the use of a quad jump. So our goal is to get on top of this information kiosk here that I just destroyed. You're going to want to do another one of those quad jumps. Again, you do a tap jump and then a triple jump. So tap. Oh, like apparently you can't jump when you're in an idle animation sometimes. Tap, triple jump, double jump. Tap, triple jump. Just like that. And most of the time, as long as you get it, you'll have the height. So once you get the quad jump on here, up here, we're essentially going to jump to that uh, column, that, cir that cylindrical column that has the um, Genron logo. We're gonna double jump to it and there's just gonna be kind of a hole there. So I'm gonna uh, pay attention closely to the angle that I'm taking here. You wanna make sure you're a bit to the left of this because uh, these monitors here have a physical hitbox. You're gonna kinda wanna be on the left side of this. Uh, even though this is like cylindrical shaped, um, the hitbox is a little more generous than you think on this thing. So you're just going to go to the left of these monitors, double jump right into here. And then as soon as you start to like fall through it, stop moving. Because what happens is if you continue to move, you will fall into infinity and you'll eventually void out, but it's pretty slow. So don't do that. Um, so once you've fallen in here, you'll be kind of in the column here. You're going to move a little bit to the right and just kind of tap it until you can get kind of your camera unstuck like that. Then what you're going to do here is you're going to follow the curvature of the wall from the from the outside. So you can start running here if you want, and you'll eventually fall into this lower plane. Then you're going to want to follow the curvature of this glass railing here. And again, this is a common spot for people to lose all of their stamina. Um, so what that essentially did is that skipped the big sequence here where you're supposed to climb all the way up to the top of this globe thing and break all the supports to knock that globe into this glass door, shattering it. But we just completely skipped all of that. So good job. Um, so what you're going to do from here is you're going to actually sprint into this corner and then walk to the right. For whatever reason, that skips a, a um, sort of level complete screen. Um, and then you make your way up to here and skip this cutscene. Now, if you're someone who likes to uh, like run with splits, you don't have to run with splits as long as you have a timer. But that's where I like to have my intro split for kind of the whole intro section. Um, all right. So from here, uh, this is pretty straightforward movement. So I'm not going to explain too much over this. I'm pretty much holding sprint the entire time. 
through the, uh, I call these the mustard hallways because they kind of look like mustard to me. I don't know. Um, I'm pro me, me and probably the, uh, like no one else would consider this looking like mustard, but that's just the name I improv on the spot. But yeah, uh, while we're kind of moving our way through this here, uh, Church, I don't know if we had any questions that came in from the chat or anything like that. Anything people wanted me to clarify? Uh, not yet. Um, there's not been uh, a lot of questions. I feel like it's pretty straightforward. It's just kind of the thing like it makes sense on paper. You just kind of got to get a handle yeah. on it and do it yourself. This is one of those games that you have to just you have to start pushing buttons in order for things to come together. Yeah. All right. So when we get through the hallway here, wait for that auto save logo to come up and then pause and log out. So there are going to be some bonus hyper snacks that are just on the ground that we're going to collect, but they don't load in because of all the nonsense we did. Um, so we're actually going to log out and then hit start and then mash A to hit our quick start. And if you set up your file right, your quick save should just be the file that we set up earlier. So it should just put us right here after that load. And then there's usually an email that you get right here. And then, okay. So technically, this is optional, but I highly recommend that you learn this next quad jump that I'm going to show you because it gets you all four of those hyper snacks that are on the platform um, in a bit of a faster manner. There is a manner of getting them casually, uh, but it's like a full 30, 30 to 40 seconds to get them. So I am going to show you this. Um, also show you where to go to do this casually if you want. But this one's really fun, um, even though it looks hard. Um, this is one of the easier quad jumps uh, in addition to the one I just showed you in the globe room. All right, so that lantern has a hitbox. So we're just going to triple jump to it. And then, so this kind of has some weird sloping to it. So you want to make sure before you go for the quad jump that you are on top of it like this. So you do kind of some readjustment jumps to make sure you're all the way on top of it like that. And then you can also kind of hit the stick forward a little bit. Um, so as you can tell, we're facing this wall, uh, but we need to go backwards. So what I like to do is completely turn the camera towards uh, Spanx's torso. And I usually do kind of like a blind quad jump here. Um, but what I've been doing as well that's been um, easier is doing one from the side. So instead of like doing it completely like this, like some of the old bull records did, um, do it from the side so that the wall is on your left. And then you're gonna do a quad jump, but do again, don't move. Don't move the analog stick until you press the B button once you've done the quad jump, okay? If you start moving too early, you're not gonna get the quad jump because you're gonna be off of the flat surface and the glitch won't work that way. So, tap jump, triple jump. I was a little bit too slow there because I'm trying to like spell it out. Um, yeah, here's what it looks like. And then as long as you successfully quad jump, you should almost always have the height that you need to get up here. It's, it's actually fairly generous. Um, so again, kind of pivot your camera to the side. Try not to zoom in the camera too close. It'll be a little bit hard to see. Um, but essentially, we're just going to be uh, holding to the right. And then as soon as like the camera, uh, as soon as we get closer, a little more upright. Yep, there you go. And then so it just looks like that. And so you know. Um, so the way that uh, a way that you can tell how many hyper snacks that you have is we just leveled up to level three through all the hyper snacks we got here, which is a big reason why I recommend that you come and get these. Um, I'll show you the casual way as well, um, but it's pretty slow. Uh, but the big the big reason that's important is we got to level three, right? So the way that you can tell how many hyper snacks that you have is by how many snacks that you collect before it gives you level three. So if the last snack that you get gives you level three, that means you've collected five spare total, which means that you're missing one somewhere. If you, um, so if you get the power up anywhere before and on any of the previous three, that means you have six or more and you're good to go. Okay. But if it's that last one that you get that either gives you level three or doesn't quite give you level three, then that means that you don't quite have enough yet. And you're going to need to find some backups, which, I, again, there's a couple more backups we can get, but I'll show you where to look. All right, so from here, just fall off the platform, and we're going to go towards the escalator in the distance. Uh, this is a pretty easy jump. Again, you're holding L2 on these railings in order to kind of skitter up and down them. It's a really cool mechanic in this game. Um, so if you do it while you're running up a slope like that, you get, like, this super big high jump. 
what you're gonna do is jump before you go flat on the top part here, because otherwise you only get this tiny little dunk. And you're gonna jump to up to that sort of ring where the security cam is placed on, so like this. And there's one hyper snack head there, and then from here, Attention. you can go around here and collect another one in through here. So I believe there is a backup that you can get in here. Um, so if you go up the elevator, jump on one of these support columns and triple jump, you can grab another backup here as well. So if you're an extra one behind, that is another option as a backup. Okay, and then once you've grabbed that, you'll probably land somewhere on this slope. Once you, you just want to immediately, most of the time, drop off from there, but you have to go grab the backup from the elevator, go over the sign here, and you're gonna go towards that weird looking red door with the silver, the gold linings, and then skip the cutscene. All right, so from so here we, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, so yeah, so, sorry. Um, for that previous room, just to clarify, you want to have... Uh, when you get that, was that group of four after the triple jump, you want to have level three and one extra, and that means you're good to go? And that means you're good to go. Um, okay. So if you... Okay, so if you get level three by the fourth one, grab that backup I just showed you in the elevator. Gotcha. Um, if you... If you have more than that, skip the backup. Okay. okay. So, by running into the cutscene over here, we unlock the glide. So, when we double jump and hold the jump button, we get this hilarious glide animation. I love this thing. Um, so, generally, what you're going to want to do in casual play is, um, or just when you're first doing your runs, is just get up to here and use this air vent to get across. And get up to here. And then you're, uh, you, this is where you want to land. And then, if you're really having trouble with that quad jump I showed you, you hit this light bulb to summon the power flies, and then you just follow them all the way. So I'll just show you what that looks like real quick. The reason why it's pretty slow is because you have to swing across all these, and then you grab them here, and then you have to go all the way across back. And because when you come out of the elevator, um, you're already right there where they are. So it just saves so much time in backtracking. It just makes life way easier. So um, that's not that's an optional one technically, but I like teaching that one because um, it's a good place to practice uh, confidence in quad jumping. Um, this one, however, um, this is almost primarily a swag strat. But before you go up the air vent, um, actually, I should have mentioned this. Uh, walk up to the save machine, and you'll see this dialog that says, "This is a save terminal." Make sure that you read this dialog box. Uh, because we're going to be doing an out-of-bounds trick where we're going by the save machine, and you really don't want this to pop up while you're doing out-of-bounds movement. Because that's bad. Um, recommend making a save here as well just by pressing the Y button, um, because if you fall out of bounds when we're doing the next trick here, um, it'll just spawn you right back here. And this is a really good point to be able to practice this. Um, this is another one of those uh, uh, triple jumps for documentation purposes because it's swag. Um, this one's really hard, don't do it. Um, but you can do a quad jump from under here. It's really hard. I'm gonna go for this like once, and you can just quad jump up here in instead of taking the air vent, and it's really swag, um, but it's really hard. And this is another example of one of those ones where it's like, do not move until you get the quad jump inputs and you hit the B button to cancel. So don't move until you hit the B button and uh, you can get a quad jump up there. Now, this is a really tricky one because your movement, you have to have really good aerial drift and, and time your jumps well. Because you're trying not to bonk on the ceiling, essentially. I'll do it one more time for the swag. Here we go. Um, I've seen someone do it off a triple jump before, but don't. Um, anyway, so if you want to, there's a swag strat for you. Um, but we're going to move on from there because that strat's really hard. And I probably shouldn't even be going for it, but... Um, that was something I struggled on, so I just wanted to make sure that was available there for someone who's masochistic enough to go for it, right? Okay, so this is a really big sequence break. This is a non-optional trick. Um, this is, uh, there's two tricks in this run that are really, really hard, or I'd say are pretty tough, in addition to all the quad triple jumping stuff. 
Um, although with practice, I don't think triple jumping's that hard, but that's besides the point. Um, okay, so this is uh, hub skip. So this is like a main central hub area. And we're gonna skip several like wings of like places you're supposed to go in general labs. And so the way that this starts is you can either do a triple jump or a quad jump, your choice. I prefer to quad jump here uh, because it gives me a little extra height. When you're doing this, make sure you're not rubbing up against this right wall here. Otherwise, again, you'll lose height. But you can just triple jump and then just hold right and you'll just phase right through the wall. Do that one more time. Pretty easy. Um, there's an example of a quad jump doing it. If you know you have a bad habit of like hugging the wall, then quad jumping might be more consistent for you. Uh, but you can also triple jump it and have plenty of height. Um, yeah, so that's what that looks like. And then once you get through here, hold forward. And then uh, most of the time, if you don't hit the uh, power flies, you'll see a text box here. Make sure you read it. This is the hard part. Okay. So if you look down there, there's a room. Um, that is actually a room with a one-way exit entrance from ventilation. So what I'm doing here is, so there's kind of like a decent amount of floor up here for a little bit around kind of where this wall is until it eventually drops off. So what we're trying to accomplish here is fall onto the floor below us such that half of us, like a, a part of us is still lodged into the wall. So that way we don't accidentally clip in bounds into that room. So we want to sort of remain out of bounds. And so the way that I do this is I line myself up with the edge of the wall, align my camera such that I can still see the wall, because if I turn the camera this way, I can't see the wall because it just calls. But if you turn it to the left too much, then I have to run out of diagonal, which is really rough. But I do it just so it's like pencil thin enough that I can see it. And I just start tapping down such that, um, Spanks there, um, his body bisects that line. So one foot on the left side, one foot on the right side of that line. And you're just gonna keep tapping until you eventually fall. And if you did it right, you'll kind of fall such that your camera is still kind of able to sort of clip around and rotate around. Um, if you're a little more to the left, then your camera may be a little bit harder to maneuver. Um, if you're in a position like this, where your camera um, doesn't like go through the, the wall, try tapping to the, like line yourself up like this and tap once to the right, and that should realign your camera. If it doesn't fix it, you phased in bounds. And if you phase in bounds, you can go through that door and just walk back around and after you disable security, or you can just log out and reload and that'll put you back at the safe point. All right. So, the, so that's hard part one. There's only one more really super hard part to this, and that's this next jump. So what we're aiming for is that next corner of this room. So the one that's by that weird funky machine. Our goal is to do a jump and hover to it such that we land on the floor, but don't like clip back and bounce. And so there's two com there's two points of failure for this. Uh, one is where you accidentally let go of your stick too early and you just fall to your doom. And the other point of failure is um, you land, but you keep holding the stick for too long and then you just phase back and bounce. That's the preferable option of the two. If you have to, overshoot this. So I'm going to try to uh, show you what this uh, looks like, but this is a little bit tricky. Um, so this might, this might actually take me a couple of tries because I've been, you know, talking a lot. Like that. Oh, I actually nailed it. Cool. Um, so you see how I kind of landed on it? And then as soon as I knew I was in the right spot, I let go. You want to wait until like you hear the audio cue for landing. You don't want to anticipate it. Because if you anticipate and let go of the left stick too early, you will fall. Because this machine right here will push you a little bit and it can just kill you. Right. So once you've gotten to this spot, we're gonna do a double jump hover towards the save machine. So we're actually gonna do, it, so we're gonna kind of go for that sort of like uh, red bit, red carpet next to the save machine. But what I'm aiming for is to the left of that blue vertical stripe, almost sort of where that like metal bit meets the glass frame like this. And I just kind of hold into it. And because this thing is here, 
it kind of blocks you from accidentally falling off, but it keeps you out of bounds, right? As long as like a foot of yours or like a bit of your body is still inside the wall, you're still good to go, okay? Now, once you're here, what I like to do uh, to show to beginners to make this a bit easier is double jump behind uh, this red wall. So sort of this red wall to our right here is I'm gonna kind of jump away from the save machine and then sort of loosely fall around to that wall and there's a bit of extra floor that sticks out. You see how the floor kind of sticks out on both sides of these walls? That's what we're aiming for here. Um, so one, two, pull kind of in and then you kind of land on this bit, right? And this is pretty, pretty generous to land on here. And then what we're gonna try to do is go to this other red carpet, this sort of uh, parallelogram that's to our right here. So I just like to do a short little jump to the right, and usually that's good. I accidentally faced through the wall again, so I'm, um, I need to swag my way up here. The S on the same machine actually stands for swag, if you didn't already know that. Um, so it looks like a lot of these are like, so aside from this one, I guess half of them phase you out and half of them phase you back into the level. Never mind. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah, see what happened? I immediately accidentally yeah. flip the stick to the right and I immediately fall. That's why you can't anticipate it. Um, because if you anticipate it at all and you're just a little bit too trigger happy with it, with letting go of the left stick, you're going to fall. In my opinion, the best call is to always try and overshoot it. Oh. Interesting. Um, I'm not supposed to... Did I load the wrong save? Hold on a second. That's not supposed to happen. Interesting. Give me a second. Uh-oh. That's not good. Uh, <laughs> let me... It happened. I... I don't know. I watched you. I watched you I save. Don't think, I don't think I did anything wrong either. Um, well, that's tragic. Is it the third from the bottom? Uh, let me take a look, I guess. I don't know. Um, let me look at all these save files and see which one of these is the one. Because I did manually save. I don't know why I would overwrite my save. This is the one. Okay, it was the one from the bottom. I... Huh. Weird. I don't know why it quick selected a different save file. Save. That was terrifying. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, let me swag my way back up here. Uh, so we did have a question. Yeah, sure, um, fire it at me. Are you, so are you uh, using a backwards compatible Xbox or is this original hardware? No, does actually it I'm not. I am running an original Xbox. This game does not have backwards compatibility with Xbox 360, unfortunately. And that's because if you okay. go to the map here, they actually use uh, the, the white and like black menu buttons on the... I didn't even know these two buttons existed until I got an original Xbox. Because um, I ran a couple of... Yeah, because I ran a couple of original Xbox games, but those were backwards compatible. So I didn't know these buttons even existed. Uh, but I think that's the reason why it wasn't be able to be made backwards compatible. Uh, something I'm looking into, actually, though, and um, I'll update... Uh, if, you, if you all... Uh, like, or have any questions about this, let me know in advance and I can DM you if I get good results. But what I'm looking into is uh, seeing if there's any good adapters for playing with 360 controllers um, on OG Xbox, because uh, playing with this hunk of plastic can be kind of annoying sometimes. Um, but yeah, that being said, uh, let me set this up again one more time. Again, I'm just tapping forward there in order to make sure I just gently land on it. Double jump, hover to here. And then even though I just have like a foot out, you want to almost kind of overshoot it to a degree. And don't try to, like, be a, a wise... A, a, I was going to say a wise guy, but, like, a wise fella about it. Um, and, like, try to hit the corner. Because if you try to hit the corner, like, and, like, play it safe so that you're in either this wall or the back wall, you're just going to fall. I've tried that. It doesn't work, uh, unfortunately. Um, now that I think about it, you could actually probably do an easier jump here. Um, and and maybe already jump to this bit if you want to, since the wall's right here. I never actually thought about that. Um, if that makes it easier for you, but you're still going to want to jump to this place next to the save spot. Um, but, oh, that actually just clipped me back in bounds. But, potential option for you is there. Um, I like to just go straight to the save machine. Um, that's just my personal preference. Um, but I want to try to show as many different ways of tackling this as possible. So I give 
people who are going for the skip as many tools as possible when going for it. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so see, that time I over I overshot it just a bit, and that just puts me in the room, so that's not a huge deal. Um, I'm just going to log out here. That's a little bit easier. And then hopefully Quick Start will just put me on my save file. What are you doing, game? Yeah. <laughs> I don't... Sometimes I just... No, don't Quick Start. Take the save file. We know it's the correct one. <laughs> there we go. Uh, sorry about the save conundrums. And I'm sorry if I'm spending like a ton of time on this trick. I just want to make sure that I cover it well because this is like one of two... Uh, one of like the main gatekeeper tricks for this run. And... Yeah. Something that I personally spent hours learning how to do because I didn't have anyone to teach me it. Because, like, pretty much only one other person is really at, like, seriously speedrun this game. And the world record for this is, like, nine years old. So that, and that's a big reason why I'm, like, super grateful for the opportunity because, like, I want to get more people to run this game. Because, like, this game's so cool, but we need more people to run it. Um, yeah. It, it, it takes as much time as you need. Like, this looks very um, yeah. finicky, and I, I appreciate you taking the time to, like, show off all the different possibilities and, like, maybe yeah. give a little extra help in certain, like, certain jumps just so that people can really understand yeah. it. Cause, yeah, I don't like, even know, yeah, I don't know how long we've been even going, but, like, if you're intimidated by all the stuff I'm showing you, we're only four and a half minutes into, like, a 20-minute run. Uh, at like high level, right? So like I know I'm going over this with a fine tooth comb, but like this run is pretty short So like if you can just master like this thing and a couple more things that um, have probably easier setups than this one um, Then you're golden. Um, this is like probably the most gatekeeper -y trick. I'd say There we go. So in this spot, I'm actually gonna uh, no, I shouldn't have tapped. I didn't listen to my own advice there um when you're in that spot, you kind of just have to go for it rather than uh, trying to save it there. But what I want to do is try to get to that last spot so I can show you the last kind of way to uh, set up the jump. Um, there's like a faster way that you can do some of the, the jumps I'm doing, but you know, they're pretty risky. Um, but I can, if, if, if we have time, if, if time for a minute, I don't know how we're doing on time, but I just want to, I, I want to make sure we uh, get to the end of the yeah. run. So. Uh, you got plenty of time. All right, sweet. Just gonna tap, 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 tap. Two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, th th um, this is something I reset on too, so this might take me a couple. It's just like this first bit is the really hard part, and then once you have practice, well, I almost just see what I mean. That's why you have multiple saves. Uh, I almost just deleted the file we've been working off. <laughs> Um, as you were saying, sure. That's sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, somebody was asking, what's the difference between uh, the easy and normal difficulty? Um, you take more damage and you deal less damage. I believe that's the primary difference. Um, so as you'll see once we get to the final boss, that's going to be very, very important. Additionally, we, we get no health buffs in this game. Um, so we just stay at like the base default 10 HP for the whole run. And as a result, that makes a lot of the late game enemies that we see really, really hard. Um, and deal like, um, you basically get two shot by most things in the run um, after a certain point. Um, so we don't, inv we don't really need to. Um, and there's like a lot of ways to. Um, there's like a lot of free heals in late game. Um, so there's a lot of ways to. Even if you stomach a hit, it's really easy to back it up, and I'll show you where. All right, so I'm just gonna like uh, shut up for a second and try to just like uh, speed run my way through like the first bit of this setup. Try to get to where I usually am at. It's a little hard for me to like try to like go over. There we go. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's usually about four swings of the rabbit before you land on something, so I use that as kind of a cue to get ready to land on something. So yeah, again, here from the save machine, around the wall, and then you kind of land on it right here. And then, um, so this wall, like this other place we're trying to land onto, um, it actually kind of slopes in a little bit, so you want to get kind of close to this edge, and then just do a jump, and then the tiniest little nudge, just like that. 
And so now we're on this platform with this wall. So you're gonna wanna come sort of towards the camera here a little bit until you have free camera rotation like this. And then what we're gonna do is just, we're gonna tap forward until we can kind of start to see our character a little bit here until we can get the camera free like that. And so what we're trying to do here is you have some leniency, but you wanna keep the wall essentially between halfway inbounds, halfway out of bounds, and you're just gonna kind of walk it. Just like that. You're gonna tap it in from here. So tap, tap, tap. And as you get more comfortable, you can start to take this a little bit more faster. You're just gonna keep tap, tapping like that. And then once you're here, uh, you can just jump, and there's this really big bend here, and so you don't have to walk the line as thin anymore. And so we're just gonna walk up until this platform ends here, right about here. And you're gonna wanna be careful here because this left wall here will kind of bully you a little bit. Just gonna go ahead, so you see where, um, sort of like that sort of, not like square shape, but kind of that weird angular bit of the carpet. We're just gonna double jump hover to that. And just land here. Something to note as well, if you undershoot the jump and you land like below the surface, I, I can't really demonstrate this because I'm I'm here right now and I don't want to like have to redo the trick, right? Yeah. Um, but if you're if you ever find uh, just a general word of advice, but it's very pertinent here because it's happened to me before. If you ever jump like underneath the floor and you're just kind of like hovering under it, do a strong attack and you'll clip up through the floor. Really, really nice way of saving uh, things like that if that happens. And so now that what we can do is now that we're in this spot, we can just jump to the freight lift. Hold the hover button and ride the elevator. And that lets us skip like uh, like the robotic swing and like uh, I think the endurance swing as well. And that saves a boatload of time. That is a huge, huge sequence break. Um, so go ahead and uh, skip this cutscene. And so this brings us into security room. Um, um, sorry, before you before you go into this, I do just have one question about sure. the uh, the last bit you showed. Um, when you were walking with the wall kind of like right in the middle, it looked like uh, uh, you kind of like started walking upwards a little bit, like in height. Uh, is that a thing that happens, or is that something you need to try and avoid? Um, that will just happen naturally. Um, okay. So normally, I I do like a running, like I I jump around that. So, um, but you can just tiptoe over it and it won't bother you. Um, or if it makes you okay. uncomfortable, just jump over it. Um, it won't push you to the right or left. It'll just kind of teleport you on top of it a little bit. Okay, that, um, that, 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 that was what I was getting towards. Is, does that push you inbounds? <laughs> yeah, no, it does not push you inbounds. If it does push you inbounds, um, you can just walk back and try to set it up again. That's the nice thing. Um, it's just you want to play it safe and try not to fall out of bounds because then you either have to void out or reload. Um, usually yep. logging out and loading back in is the fastest, but that you eat a big time loss if that happens, and it's just unfortunate. Um, okay, so key card skip. So um, I'm going to explain exactly what we're skipping here. So there's this big, um, that you can kind of see it from here, that sort of blue orb, and there's all these like lightning things. So, like, if I, like, run up to here and, like, try to get through, I'll take damage, right? And, oh, this guy will probably kill me, too. Come on, do it. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> and so, though that electricity doesn't disappear, and you can't go through that door until you collect seven different key cards, one from each wing. And so the way the game actually normally works is you go through, like, two or three of the other wings here. And then you go to security room, and then there's a bunch of cutscene, and then that unlocks another three wings. And then you go to medical wing, which unlocks a upgrade, and then you have to go all the way and backtrack through all the rest of the game to get key cards from bosses in each of the seven different wings. It's just like a huge backtracking segment. Um, but the, similar to the last trick we did, the elevator's always loaded. And so we can use that to our advantage in order to skip getting any of the key cards. And this is called key card skip. I'm going to do the skip once so I can show you what it looks like. It's gonna look really scary. I promise it's not as hard as I'm gonna make it look. What do you say we take that. all this breathless destruction and just, you know, get to each other. And then like that. So that's like the first part. Uh, the second part is just like another triple and quad jump. 
But those are pretty straightforward, and I'll show you how to do this when we get there. Oh, but that weird part where I went over the wall, that's the part that really gets people. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you all how to do next, so I'm just going to... Hope this doesn't kill me. Okay, it didn't kill me. Nice. Okay. So, to start, you want to go up... I, I like to do this from uh, the right side, because the right side I find a little bit easier to get out of bounds with. I think you can technically do it with either, but do it this way. Um, from here, you can just trip, you can just double jump up here, and you can get up here eventually. Um, triple jumping is a little bit faster to get on top of here. And so, uh, if you get up here, there's just this big angled surface. And whenever you press in any direction, you will start to slip and sort of slide down. Even forward. Uh, but you can still go to the right, and so we're jumping on this a lot in order to make sure we don't, like, fall all the way off, right? So essentially what we're doing here is a triple jump. It's very clear, this is a- we're doing a triple jump here, not a quad jump. I find that doing a triple jump here actually makes this easier. And the reason why is that when you're doing a triple jump, uh, you actually, because you have less height, um, you're less likely to bounce on this ceiling. And you kind of can, like, have aerial mobility a little bit earlier, which I think makes this a bit easier. Okay? So, something to note. We're trying to get over this ceiling bit, right? And so, if you saw right there, I kind of just get blocked by it if I try to do a regular triple jump. Uh, so what we need to do is we really need to make sure that we hold down the A button and actually kind of, do instead of doing, like, the, the tap triple jumps of old, or, like, the... The quick press ones of old that we really hold it and try to milk as much height as we can from a triple jump here. So you see how I do like a almost kind of like a full punch before I uh, I start to try to do it. Full punch like that. And so that'll get you up and over this thing hopefully. Um, now, what I look for when doing an initial position is I like to jump up here a bit until I'm kind of like too high and then like two big taps like that. There's multiple positions where this will actually work from. Um, it will take, uh, everyone's probably gonna like start out by having their one setup that they really like, their one height setup that they really like. Uh, but then as you get to like better at triple jumping and sort of controlling your air drift, um, you can pretty much make most setups work. Um, but generally what I like to do is get up as high as I can. One, two. The two taps, and then do the triple jump from there. So when you're when you're doing this triple jump as well, um, you can actually probably go three taps. That might be a little easier. One, two, and just like the lightest little extra tap. Um, you just don't want you don't want to be too high uh, because otherwise you just you won't triple jump. But you can even bang your head on the ceiling a bit here, and it's pretty lenient. So just. Find generally a spot. Um, if you see right here, there's kind of a, that diamond-shaped thing. Um, that sort of diamond-shaped thing where the crossbars kind of meet. Um, I'm kind of putting uh, Sphinx's head at the sort of same height level as the topmost corner of that. So you kind of see how like I get like like the hairs of my head are kind of like at the top level of that, um, and how it kind of lines up with that. Um, just eyeball it. You don't have to worry too much about it. Um, but the big thing that uh, makes people struggle with this trick is the fact that the ceiling kind of slants at a diagonal, kind of like that, right? So when you're doing this, you want to hold down, but also a little bit to the right until you get over. So see how I'm kind of going out towards the right like that? Um, what that allows me to do is get like a little bit more height after I get over the, the sort of the bulwark here that uh, um, is going to kind of causes from getting, like, this sort of ceiling thing, right? I don't know why I called it a bul bulwark. Um, the bulkhead, I think that's probably a better word for it. But again, you're going down, and then kind of to the right a little bit until you see your head pop up. Then you can kind of start moving forward. And then what you're gonna do is once you um, get the double jump, and again, make sure you're holding the A button when you're doing these jumps so you can get maximum height. So hold A in between each jump you're doing. And then you're gonna hover towards this corner. So see how there's like part of this wall that's like glowing red and then the other's kind of like more that like regular dark blue. You're gonna aim right for that corner. And then if you feel like you're not gonna make it, hit the B button for a strong attack and that'll give you a little extra distance as well. That's something that can help you as well. Okay. 
One, two, three. And then as soon as you get over, hold back into the left. If you don't hold back into the left, you'll fall somewhere down there. And that's not good. Um, so don't do that. So as soon as, like, you think you're about to get over it, or as soon as you kind of see yourself sort of roll over the edge, um, hold back into the left. With more emphasis on left than on back. One, two, three. And then see how I'm kind of holding back and then to the left a little bit. And that'll get you on this sloped surface. So I'll show you that one more time at full speed. This one looks really intimidating, but it's pretty straightforward to practice. Um, additionally, assuming you have autosave on, as you saw earlier, autosave will just put you back in that tunnel. So if you fall out of bounds, just reload. Just don't even try to avoid out. Just reload. Trust me. Um, so one, two, three. One, two, three hovers. And then you can also turn the camera as well in order to sort of uh, sort of get a better view of where you're at. And then you're kind of on the slope bit. So just walk up the slope. So you can kind of turn your camera. And then you want to kind of go up until like you start to like the, the slope starts to level off. And you're going to do a triple jump. But uh, again, you don't want to start moving until you hit the B button. And you kind of want to go around in a, in a sense, right? So see how I'm kind of like going way around out of my way? Uh, those electricity uh, barriers, your hitbox actually extends a little bit further than you'd think. So like, um, like that, for example. Um, so if you're too like narrow and close to the invisible wall, it'll catch you and it'll pop you out and you'll just die. Um, so that's something you want to keep in mind. You want to kind of like drift away from the like the inbounds and then snake your way back in around the time of your second jump or so. Um, just, you don't have to overthink it. Just as long as you think about, okay, I'm gonna be like just a little bit away to the right, you should be fine. One, two, three, B. Then start to curve into the slope. Walk up the slope. See how I go around, and then you can start to hold left, and then you're good to go. Um, you don't have to land on this top ledge either. Um, this is very, it's very, very lenient to get the hover distance you need. You can even land on this lower bit as well and you're good to go. So that's the first part. That's like the really hard part of card key, uh, of key card skip. Now, to actually get in the elevator, we have to do a little bit more work. You're going to want to do a quad jump here. Um, this is like, I like do a quad jump here, um, because for whatever reason, this security orb thing, if you start, like, if you do a triple jump, there is a risk that you will actually physically push the sphere down. And if you do that, it makes this A, way harder, and B, if you push it down too far, actually outright impossible. Um, so for safety, you actually want to do a quad jump. You can't get away with a triple, but if you do a triple, you're going to have to jump as soon as you touch the sphere. So I'll show you the quad jump version of it. Jump up here, and you'll see that it moved pretty much not at all. Then from here, I find doing this with a quad jump is easier. I've done it with a triple jump before, but I think quad jumping here is easier. Do a quad jump, and like once you're done pressing B, start holding forward. You can actually go a little bit earlier than your B press if you want to. Um, I just generally say don't move until you press B, at, just to like for for beginners especially because if I don't. Then what ends up happening is people just leave too early. But as long as there's something solid under your feet, as you start moving, and as uh, you can move a little bit while you're executing a triple or quad jump, just make sure there's solid ground underneath you while you're doing it. So quad jump looks like this, and then you're gonna want to make sure you hold hover and hold straight forward. That was too early. Oopsie doozy. Oh, make it stop! Please make it stop! So one, two. Three, four. And then you just hover over that, and you hover straight through the solid wall, and now we're on top of this bit. I would show that one more time, but I'm worried about the sphere going into that position I was talking about, so we're just going to leave that one there. And again, as with any of these tricks, what I recommend doing as well is um, slowing down the footage can really be help, and looking at my input, uh, my, my, web, my input cam as well can really help. 
Um, especially if you're having trouble with a lot of like the directional inputs, um, just keep an eye on that left thumb of mine, which way I'm kind of angling things relatively. Um, so as you kind of are starting to see, I'm sort of slipping on the side there. Um, you can do it either left or right side. I prefer to do left because the camera is a little more kind to me here. Is you want to start to sort of walk down this slope here, so you get to round about here, and there's a little cr like crevice that you can fit yourself in here. Um, you can it, the safe strat is just jump in the elevator. Um, but you can actually skip an extra, like, elevator exit cutscene by just jumping in through here. And it's just as simple as that. Um, and then ride the elevator! And now you skipped all the key cards and, like, hours of gameplay. So good job! Person watching this and following along with me at home. Um... But yeah, okay. So, now we're going into lobby. Um, this is a, a, a pretty fun part, but... This is where the enemies get really, really hard, because we're not supposed to be here yet. So for this first section here, I I sprint on the left side of this lady, and then as she gets close to me, I just kind of hit the B button and pray. Um, and then most of the time she doesn't kill me. I jump over this water fountain here to make sure I don't aggro the wrong enemy. Now right here, this is going to be a weird kind of out-of-bounds clip. doesn't really work like all the rest. All you need to do is go to, like, down here below this bottom... Oh, I got shot from somewhere. Well, thanks, game. That was very polite of you. Uh, <laughs> I got sniped by, like, a shuriken of some kind. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do the setup a little bit faster just to make sure I don't get completely owned. Because um, she's going to give me some grief. Um, one, two, three. Hover through here. And then what you can do is just double jump up here, and there's just going to be like this water effect. And so if you get up here, you can actually clip out of bounds. So what I do is I angle myself towards the pillar here and just tap and then start tapping. Once I get into this corner, instead of tapping up, you start to tap up left. Kind of like that. And you can see he starts to slide into the wall like that. Also, I didn't know this was a thing. That's really funny. I just gotta say. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, all you gotta Wonderful. do is just all you gotta do is just double jump. Oh, she's gonna murder me. Um, I may actually reload the level here because she might be stuck there now. Um, yeah, essentially all you're doing there is just tapping forward on the stick, and then you start to tap up left until you start sliding to the right, and then that slide to the right will slide you through the wall there. One, two, three. Oh, you are going to be a pain in the butt. All right, so tap forward and tap up into the left. And then you see I start to slide. Then you can start moving to the right and you're through the wall just like that. All right, so this is mostly just a movement thing. You actually don't really. I, well, no, you actually have to do this. Uh, never mind. Forget that. Um. Anyway, so you do that clip, and you get onto this water plane. And you're going to turn your camera so you start to see, sort of long ways, the rest of the water pool and sort of that gate over there. And make sure you don't... Make sure you stay to the, to the right of the wall, and you can just start running. And you're going to see, aw, oh, poor Tuka the turtle. And then we're just going to ignore him. And then from here, you can just run off, press B, and then you just fall out, and you land on the other side. Now, right here, you'll get two free hyper snacks here and here. Free HP refill right here. Now, for first time run runners, I recommend hitting the switch. This will activate all of these um, grapple points. And um, there is a way of skipping this. Um, I'll show you it because it's swag, um, but it's really hard, and I don't recommend going for it. So just make your way here the way I'm going. All right, now, important thing to note here, um, because I died, these hyper snacks are going to spawn in here, which is what we want. But if I ha if I manage to get through here deathless, these won't spawn in right away. So what you need to do is go past this guy, go to about here, and then turn around, and then they'll spawn him. And then, as you can see, I hit level four. So by the time you hit those three hyper snacks, you should be level four. If you're not, there's a couple more spots we can get, like, a chance of getting one or more. But if by that point, you're probably not going to get level 4. And if you don't, that's okay. Um, it just affects your damage output at the end of the run. 
So not the end of the world if that happens. Um, so I'll show you what the slat swag strat looks like right here. Um, don't go for this. This is really hard. Um, if you want to learn this strat, just DM me. Um, I only just learned this a couple of days ago because even when I first started learning this run and learning how to do quad jumps, I couldn't consistently, uh, because you have to do a specific kind of quad jump. You have to time your jumps in a very specific way to get maximum height. And it's really hard to describe. Um, so it's just one of those things where the best way I could teach someone how to do this is have them show me gameplay footage, and then I say, okay, you're jumping too early here or too late here. Um, so because of that, I'm not going to go into too much details with this one, but this is, I just wanted to document it with hand cam so that people have this as a reference if they are ridiculous enough to try to go for it. But you can go up through here instead of taking the grapple points, but if you were to take the grapple points, you can just do a, a, a sprint sweep attack, and this guy just can't deal with it. It's really funny. And then from here, you can just take the grapple points up to the elevator. Attention. And then we just can s completely skip all of the Genron lobby. Um, it skips a lot of uh, like this part of the level. It's really cool. One, two, three. And then take the middle elevator. All right, so I hope we're still doing good on time. Luckily, this next section is pretty much do as I say, say as I do. Um, how are we all doing back at home, Char uh, Church? Doing all right. Uh, so for time, we're at 117, but you got plenty of time. Okay, yeah, we're doing perfect. Okay. Um, cool. Um, if you're feeling good, Actually, Church, we're we can, at 118. Yeah, if you're feeling good, Church, we can keep going. But if you need a break, this would probably be the best time to take a break, if you need one. Um, but I'm, I'm good if you're good. All right, cool. All right, so exiting the elevator. Um... Hit the helium thing, and we're just gonna do- we do this section pretty much as casually, so my words are gonna be kind of scant. I'm just gonna mention a couple of uh, stress that you're wanna gonna, gonna wanna do for safety purposes, and a couple of people that you can uh, beat up to get extra hyper snacks if you want to. Uh, but the big thing is I hold down the A button with my thumb, and then curl around with my index finger to maneuver the camera. I find this way easier and avoids headaches where you accidentally pop your helium. Um, yeah, this is just comedy. I love this part. Even though it's like kind of not like an auto scroller, but pretty it's pretty cut and dry speed wise. Um, it's just very funny. Go through there. And again, chat, if you have any questions uh, for any of the stuff that I'm doing or want me to re-explain something or re-clarify something, let me know. Uh, because I will forget. Um, um, so there's a there's one enemy that you can kill. Uh, we have to take care of this guy. So this is my go-to backup if I don't have six by now. Five, six. Just use heavy attacks here. And tap forward. Oh, nice. That hyper snack went through the wall. Nice game. Oh, I still picked it up through the wall. Sometimes the hyper snack goes through the wall. There's not a very reliable backup. But he's an option. That guy up there is an option. I think there's actually two up there. There's two up there. One down below, and another two up top. So you have, I believe, six total exterminators that you can make use of in order to get um, extra hyper snacks if you don't have enough in your route. We're just going to do this to open the hatch. And then I like to jump through to the right here, point my camera down so I can try to maneuver, and just sort of anticipate where the fan blades are going to be. And then take the helium, and we're going back up. Sorry, I got a little bit out of alignment. I'm sure you all don't really need controller cam, but I just want to make sure that I have it in the right spot uh, for one of the end game skips, which is like kind of the other gatekeeper. But if you can, if you can do hub skip, you can do. Um, like the electro whip skip thing. I don't even know what the upgrade is called because I think in game you just get like a shot of anesthetic and that allows you to grapple at like electric grapple points. It's a really funny cutscene, um, but it's in the medical wing, which takes forever to get to. So we have to do a really tough skip in order to get past it, but I'll show you how to do it. Not a big deal. All right, so once you get to a certain point in the second bit, you can kind of just let go of the stick and just vibe. Until you get to the target, these paddles aren't really big enough to be a threat. I 
I should also mention as well, if anyone wants like a copy of my splits to like run against or to just like have a spot where you can be like, oh, I have splits and I know where to split, just let me know and I can D DM you the split file. So just hop down through here. And then from here, you can actually take the railing and completely avoid that guy's attack and it's a little bit faster. Uh, whenever possible, try to take these railings. Your move speed is a little faster. And then for safety, I like to kill these uh, security drones because they have a projectile attack, and that's really nasty. But you can ignore the first set of spider bots um, until I tell you to. And once you get into the room with any of these crushers, uh, just like sort of gently approach the spiders and just wait for them to run into your rabbit on the chain. Don't try to like like fate. Don't like try to like mash your face into them because they will damage you, and you want to try to make sure you don't lose too much health. So go ahead and use bunny. That'll make a great combans for gamers tweet. Just use bunny. Uh, <laughs> then you're good to go. And then from here, okay. So this obstacle uh, in the hangar moves at a set cycle. So I would just wait it out if you get here on a slow cycle. And from here, you can take to this platform and then jump up to this thing. Uh, instead of going the normal way through that zip line, you're going to go up towards this caution sign up here. You can do either a quad or triple jump for this. Doesn't matter. Whatever you're more comfortable with and whatever gets you this more consistently. Um, this is also why we turn up the brightness. Um, it's a, It looks pretty dark here on camera footage, on, uh, on capture card footage, so I apologize. Uh, but what I do is, once you get to the caution sign, I line up where this sort of deadbolt is and sort of turn my camera roughly about this way. Um, so I face roughly about this way, and again, either triple or quad jump, and you're just going to hold straight for it. And so what that will do is you'll actually hit a checkpoint trigger for a later portion of the level and skip a lot of the platforming. <laughs> Again, this is a situation where you want to make sure you're holding the A button if you're doing it via triple jumps. See how I face plant here? Then you can walk up here and then back and you'll get the checkpoint. Alright, now I recommend for most players to just go through this next section of platforming casually. Uh, but for documentation purposes, I'm going to show you some swag you can do to not have to deal with these obstacles. What you can actually do is jump up here and do a triple jump and get around and land on some platforms around this wall. Now, the thing with uh, changing your aerial drift here is you're gonna wanna make sure you're turning the camera way far in advance or else otherwise you're just gonna swing way far away from the platform. So see how I'm kinda doing the thing again where I use my index finger to change the camera while still holding the A button? That's what I would recommend here if you decide to go for the strat as well. This one saves considerably less than some of the other strats. It's it's a matter. It's a it's a it's spare change, but it's cool. So you land on this, and then you can just jump on these things from behind this wall. And then once you get to the last one here, this one right here, you can triple jump and then get up here. That triple jump's pretty weenie as well. Make your way through here. This is a spot where it's pretty easy if you're not paying attention to lose too much stamina. So just try to be patient and take an extra jump maybe here just to conserve stamina. Get the monkeys and then you're good to go. Also, make sure, I, I'm going to mention this again uh, because it's really important. Make sure you hit that checkpoint that I showed you earlier uh, where I went up that uh, back with like those middle walkways. If you like run, if you game over and have to reload, it'll reload you to that checkpoint and you will die a lot practicing this skip. I'm just going to warn you. Um, this is another tricky skip. Um, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, we're supposed to get this upgrade that allows us to um, be able to grapple onto these electric grapple points. Uh, but we skipped that because we did key card skip. So here's how we're going to skip it. I highly recommend you do this with a triple jump and do the thing where you hold down the A button to maximize horizontal distance. Don't do a quad jump. I learned that the hard way. Um, okay. So, my goal, you see that sort of glass dome thing? We want to get to those like slanted windows on the top side of it. So, we just do a triple jump, and then as soon as you touch down, start like pressing jump. Hover, jump. Like that. And you should eventually get on top of it like this. Okay? Then from here, you want to come about midway up to here. And so from here, 
you'll see a couple of things. You'll see these two blue, uh, these two blue grapple points moving on a cycle. These both move at the same time. So I like to keep my camera at roughly shoulder level, but keep an eye on that back one to know when they're going up and when they're going down. Because again, they're both falling at the same rate. When the one in the back starts to fall down, I'm going to triple jump and then grapple the grapple point. Hover, grapple. And so what I do here is essentially we have to do a really difficult jump in order to get from this grapple point to that platform with like the, the door over there. I'm going to show you it once, uh, attempt to show you this just so you can see what it looks like and before I try to even explain it. One, two, hover. One, two, three, one, two. Oh, I almost had it. <laughs> but you can kind of see what I'm going for there. Uh, my setup was a little bit off, so you'll get to see this triple jump again. Uh, so if you fall off of it like that, it usually means that on your initial jump, you weren't holding A for long enough. That's a bit better. See how I was holding A for longer there? That'll be the key. All right, so usually I just wait. Wait for the one in the back to start lowering. Triple jump. One, two, three, four. Grapple. See if I can get a good example. One, two. One, two. That's not gonna work. One, two. That also won't work. I'll, I'll, I, I swear this will all make sense once I actually hit the dang trick. Oh, and I thought being stamped with Mick. That won't work. I'd... So essentially what we're doing is we're trying to like get a swing going and reach that platform at like the perfect possible time. This is really hard. So like I said, like this is something that even I have to practice because it's just one of those tricks, but I'm just putting a lot of undue pressure on myself right now. So let me try to set this up again. That looks a little bit better. This probably won't work. Yeah. It was really close, though. Ah, You're doing great, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, it's all good. This is one of those tricks, like, along with, like... The nice thing about this trick is it's just kind of, like, over and done. It's not, like, super drawn out like the hub skip is, so... Yeah. This is one of those tricks. It's a very... Feel I find it to be a really feel-based trick, but I do have a setup. Um... So to you, I am some sort two, of Swiss Army bunny three... That might work. Almost. Um, yeah, I don't know why I'm out of my zone here a little bit. I, I was in this a lot more consistently when I was practicing it earlier, but my apologies for making this look hard and scary. It's pretty tough, but it's not that bad. Um, I'm just being... And like, that's how it goes on these. Like, there's always one trick that's like, it just, for some reason, it just isn't working, so... Three, four, five, six, one, two... One, two, three. I got like a short change jump. One, two. Three. You're a weasel of few words and even fewer sane actions. Yeah, it won't work. I don't know why I went for that jump. <laughs> it's nowhere close. <laughs> So I guess one question. Uh, sure, go for it. If, if I missed it already, then uh, it's all, uh, my apologies. No worries. When you're resetting for the jump, you're just kind of hovering in air. Is there a particular reason why you can't hang on to it? Or? Um, so you swing back and forth. I'm trying to grab. Yeah. So essentially with this trick, you're trying to jump at the apex of like your swing on the side closest to the door. So what I'm actually okay. doing is I'm jump, double jumping off and then hovering so that I re-grapple at a specific point so that gotcha. I do four swings total, forward, back, or back, forward, back, and then forward. And then I, if I set it up right, that last forward swing will be at the top of the arc of, like the arc of the grapple point going up and down. Gotcha. And, okay. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. I'm tickled. So typically what I do is I wait for four swings back and forth, or six swings back and forth, so one, two, so like a back is a one and forward is two, right? Um, so I wait six times and then I double jump full height and then hover. 
Um, I might lose my hover here. Oh, I didn't lose my hover. Thanks, game. One, two, this will work. There we go. That's what the skip looks like. Um, I spent all this time trying to, like, do it and not have to explain it. Um, but it turns out if I just explain it while I'm doing it, I get more consistent. Um, so yeah, that's what the trick looks like. Essentially, like I was kind of describing earlier, um, it's all kind of based on when you re-grapple that grapple point. So, I'm I can, you can actually do like a triple jump back to it, and I can, um, triple, uh, like do a hover jump all the way back here so I can re-describe to you what I'm looking for. There's kind of layers to this that I'm looking for, but once you get the hang for it, you know what to look for. So, two, three, four, five, six, double jump, hover, and then I kind of angle towards the ball. One, two, three, double jump. And then at the end, go for a B input. Um, so that one, I mistimed it just a little bit. That was an execution error on my end. That probably would have worked. I also think I re-grappled a little bit too late. Um, or a little too early, rather. Um, there's a couple of moving parts to that skip. Um, so yeah, like I said, if you die, which oh, you will in your first run, you will die to that skip. That's what happened to me. My first run was like 40 minutes or something like that. Um, that's why you want to wheel around here and grab this checkpoint. Because this is your closest checkpoint. Otherwise, your last checkpoint was like key card skip. So make sure you grab that checkpoint and thank me later. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, you still have to backtrack a little bit if you feel the skip, but it's not nearly as catastrophic as... Oh, Yo, you have to do key card skip again. You poor thing. We're just going to make our way back through here. Abandon the monkeys. Sorry, monkeys. Yeah, like I said, if you can do this, and you can do that other skip I showed you, the hub skip, um, those are like the only two. Like, I think those are the two really, like, gatekeepy strats um, for this run. Um, Alright, there we go. So I get my triple jump up to here. Wait. So if I see that they're already coming down, I wait a cycle. There's no shame in waiting an extra cycle here. Go for the triple jump. One, two, three, four. Grab. One, two, three, four, five, six. Double jump. Hover. Face towards it. At the last possible moment, go for the grapple. I don't suppose you would stop. I was close. Painful this was. But that's essentially what you're looking for. It's a bit precise when you try to re-grapple, but um, my goal here is to try to give you as many visual examples as possible with the controller cam up so that like you can at least slow down the footage and like look at the visual cues yourself and uh, come up with something that... Because uh, it's one thing for me to describe it to you, it's another thing for you to have the controller in your hands and actually playing with it. So, try to get one more two good examples of it. One, two, three... One, two, three. Did it work? Wow. Ah, too far. You use me to smash that guy, then ran up there dragging me behind you, of course. I'm gonna get like one more good attempt at it, and then I'll probably move on. Um, Don't ever do that. This is just one of the. For me, this is a very, this is a trick that I kind of learned by feel. Um, and like you know, those are those are like the things that I look for. But like in my head, because I've you know practiced this a bit, I know what to sort of feel for and how to make adjustments based on when I hit the grapple. Um, so that's just kind of like part of like the learning curve with this trick a little bit. Um, but I'd be surprised if the snake's it. Yeah. Okay. I'm also I'm also slamming too early as well. So don't slam as early as I am. You want to slam at the last possible moment, and then even more last possible moment than that. It's like one of those things with, like, you know, the out-of-bounds thing we were talking about with the wall and the seam lock, where you don't want to, like, undershoot it. You don't want to, like, panic and hit the button too early. Otherwise, you're just going to fall and miss the ledge. One, two, three... Or we're gonna back off on that one because I kind of from feel knew that I got like the wrong grapple timing. That one also doesn't work. One, two, this is perfect. Oh, I didn't get as much height off of that jump as I was looking for. Yeah, that'll happen sometimes where like 
Um, like, you really want to make sure you grapple as late as possible when you're grappling upward for the second time. Because um, sometimes you'll just get launched off at a weird angle and you won't get the maximum height jump off a grapple. Don't know why. Grapple points are a little weird in this game. There's gotta be a better way. Two, Not sure what it three, is, but there's sure four, five, six, one, two, upper. Six, one. Yeah. Oh, really? So sometimes if you grapple too late, um, you don't get the speed that you need for your hover or your swing. Yeah, so that one wouldn't work. The other thing I'm doing is I'm trying to look for like a diagonal swing kind of like that. That can also give you additional uh, distance as well. It was close, but not quite. Right. Let me shut up. <laughs> Let me shut up and try to get this one more good time. Um, yeah, and this trick's kind of a struggle bus uh, sometimes, but I think it's just more under pressure. I've also been talking for an hour and a half straight, so I'll blame it on the nerves. There's got to be a better way. Not sure what it is, but there sure got to be one. That's perfect. Oh. Perfect. Yeah, that's exactly what you want. So there's a really good example. So clip that and then slow it down and then look at like when I'm grabbling onto things. And once you have it once... And you start to get it that first couple of times, you can start to like learn. There's like a bunch of different variables, such as like, you know, your initial grapple, how you double jump and hover. Um, that's the setup I like to use to try to um, keep as few moving parts as possible. Because um, like the big thing that like used to be really hard when I was learning this off the world record video is that um, you wouldn't do any re -air, mid air readjustments. So like, when you initially grappled onto the first one is how it would determine your setup. And that made it really, really hard. So I do that double jump hover strat to make the lineup a lot easier. And again, what you can kind of do is when you're getting that grapple, um, the second grapple, when you're trying to actually attempt the trick, so you can also look for is to be a distance away from it to try to get sort of a, like on the right side so that you kind of do like a weird diagonal swing from left to right in addition to your forward momentum. That will give you additional distance and leverage as well. I was just not getting it very well for some reason. Um, and again, this is one of those tricks that you kind of have to learn by feel. And I, that, the, the explanation there was a little scattershot, so I apologize. But again, uh, I'm reachable via DM or by Discord or by you know Twitter, anything like that. So if you're like learning this game and you're really struggling with this trick, I kind of made that a lot harder than it looks. It's still tough, don't get me wrong, but uh, I kind of screwed the pooch a little bit there. So if you, again, if you have any questions, let me know. I am an open book when it comes to this stuff because I'm pretty much the only runner right now. So, um, so yeah, that is uh, the electricity skip. So if you can do this, you're sick. Um, and let me know how I can help you as well. Um, but yeah, that being said, we're going to move on from here. Um, we have three of these, like, little grinder things here, so this bit takes forever. Um, there are enemies in here, don't fret. Because we hit a checkpoint there, if we die, we just have to redo these grinder things over again. It's annoying, but it's not as tragic as having to redo the skip. Uh, but again, I kind of just, like, slowly inch my way towards the spider bots, and then just kind of, uh, like, mash the X button as they start to get closer, and just let them run into Spanx there. This one is really long for some reason. It's like way longer than like any other like machinery rabbit muncher in the game. I don't know what these things are called, but there's like th three of them in a row here. Yeah, so that one killed me, for example. Sometimes that happens, um, especially when you attempt this trick a lot of times. Every time you fall into the pit, you lose one HP. Um, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to sit through the grinders again, but hopefully everyone's at home is doing okay. Oh, it like uh, you. Oh no. Um, so it game over, game over me. Um, that is fine. I have a save. So if you die too many times, you will game over and go to your last save point. Luckily, I have just the save for this. <laughs> that was a little terrifying for a second. Um, should be this one. This, is, this really isn't missing all that much, because this will put me at an autosave right in here. So this vent system is where you get basically put out right after you do... Um, so th that's one of the crunchers. That's like the third of the crunchers, like right there. Um, that's normally what you would do, and then you just climb up this ladder. And then you're good to go. 
Uh, I just accidentally bonked into an enemy and died. Um, but this file should... Let me just double check that... Oh, Raymond's level 5. Uh, that's fascinating. Um, well, that'll just make the final boss go a little faster. Huh. Anyway, so assuming you don't die like a buffoon like I did, you climb up the vent, and you make your way through here. Uh, so what we're actually going to be doing, uh, this skip is r pretty straightforward compared to everything else you've seen for the last little bit with that brutal trick um, that I showed you earlier. Uh, this is actually where I was showing you how to triple jump. So now we're all the way back here, full circle. Um, so you can just jump up these pillars up here to get to this other side. Oops, I fell, so I'm going to just do a quad jump. Get up here, and you can just double jump up here. Um, so the middle of this ceiling isn't solid. So, if I do a triple jump into here, you can see that that's not solid. And what I can actually do is set up a- you can do a quad jump, but I, I tend to do this with a triple jump. You can actually just go through the ceiling and then over this wall into the boss arena, and that skips several phases of the boss fight. Um, so the way that that works is as such. So I can only really demonstrate this like once or twice. Well, I have to save. Never mind. Um, so I'll show you what this looks like. So, so triple jump out, double jump in, and then you just roughly go towards like the green carpet, and you'll land somewhere like up here or something. Just for reference's sake, I'll give you one more example. Um, but that one's pretty straightforward. Um, similar to how we did key card skip, where essentially we're kind of going out, back, and then in. But I like to just do that one from right to left, because I think it's a little bit better, or easier for me than uh, forward and then backward. So I tend to align with this pillar. You can go like closer if you want. It's, it's pretty, it, it doesn't matter all that much. Out and then in, double jump, hover, and then just fall into here. And then you're just gonna break these bookshelves. There you go. HP refill here if you need it. And then there's another one on the other side of bookshelves as well. All right, so you free the monkeys and the skunk here, the council of the monkey. Um, and then you're just gonna walk through the wall and exit, and now we need to do the same thing on the other side. Um, but it's a little bit harder because there's still that glass wall there. Um, so what I do is I go into this corner. You have to do a quad jump for this. Otherwise, this won't work. So I do the quad jump. I back off a little bit downward on the left stick, and then I do the double jumps forward. And then you land up here, and then triple jump. But... Don't, like, move back and then forward until, like, you're getting ready to do your second, like, jump after the, the glitch. So basically, anytime after B, you're good on this one. I think I was over-exaggerating a little bit. Like that. And if you do those two properly, that should get you up here. And then you can double jump over to the other council of monkey. And then you can break their library for them, and that will free the Council of Monkey. There you go. So we have freed the Council of Monkey and a skunk for each side as well. And then while we're waiting for the skunks to go activate a cutscene, I like to break all of these pots and lamps that are outside the invisible, uh, outside these glass walls because they'll make this part coming up a lot easier. And then just make your way to the center of the room. And we gotta wait on the skunks here. Uh, so this is a, a non-speedrunner question. This is a lore question. Yeah, sure. Uh, what is up with the rabbit or the bunny? Like, it, it must have a concussion by now. Oh, I, he's probably had some sort of experimenting done in it. I mean, he's a talking rabbit. What else could they have done to him? You know, it's probably made of That's iron fair. or something. Okay, yeah. All right, so this is the final boss. This guy is very dangerous. Um, he will two-shot you, and uh, one of his attacks is an instant kill. So the way that the boss fight here works, we skipped several phases of the boss already, um, but we basically skipped to the final phase of the boss. The way that this works is that um, he can only take damage when he is um, skunked on, essentially. So the skunks will randomly walk up to the boss, Spray their skunk stuff on him, 
And then you can damage him with your XXX comp, like your uh, your light attack combos. That's what the button's called. Um, so when he initially runs up up to me, I'm gonna keep him at bay so he blocks with just light attacks, so that he doesn't like murder me. And then the skunks will pretty much immediately get you an opening, and sometimes he'll just die. <laughs> um, you can go for that opening if you want to, if you want to be risky. Uh, if not, I'll show you what to do. Uh, but if you die, this is very important, what you want to do is wait in the center of the room until the health bar appears. Um, otherwise, the boss will softlock. Alright, so what we're going to do here is we're going to do the same trick we did earlier, but with a better camera angle. So we do the quad jump, and then triple jump. Triple jump. And then once you get up here, you can go back into where the Council of Monkey was. But now if you destroy all of these and kind of lure the... Uh, oh, what is he doing over there? I think he got stuck. Um, but essentially what you can do with this is you can actually just hit him through the wall and he can't reach you ever um, if you do it right. Which is really nice as a just a general strat um, because it means you don't die. For the most part. There's a couple of things you have to be worried about, but you just have to kind of pay attention. Wow, he's really getting stuck, isn't he? Alright, so you kind of want to wander him over this way. Um, just kind of move back and forth a bit until he decides to walk towards one of the walls. And then you just wait for the skunks to get at him. And then you do only light attack combos. And then if he's not close enough to the wall, don't try to attack him. Because what he can do is like a rushing charge attack that will instant kill you. Um... And so, if the monkeys are really going to town on him, you just kind of move back and forth till he gets unstuck, but the monkeys have actually kind of put him in a good position. And then you just wait for the next skunkin' in. And you rinse and repeat. And as you might, like, expect from how little damage we're dealing here, um, even though we're on level 5, we're still not dealing all that much damage. You're expected to be, like, level 15 to 18 around this point. Your damage output's pretty scant, um, but you just keep rin rinsing and repeating this process until the boss dies. That's exactly what we're going to do. If he gets stuck on the monkeys, you can try to wiggle him back and forth or punch him to try to get him a little more unstuck, but you're just kind of waiting on the skunks at this point. Not the suit. Anything but the suit. And he has very iconic lines like, Not the suit. Anything but the suit. Ow! Sometimes the skunks don't like to behave. There is one attack that he can do. If he raises his, fit, his cane, and like does like a slowdown kind of thing, jump. Because he's gonna do a shockwave attack that will go through the wall. It's just something to look out for. Um, but most of the time, if you keep your distance, he won't do that attack. The church, how are you enjoying this extremely epic final boss fight? <laughs> Make signs of things where you can just like cheese the boss and there's like, that's just it. Um, I mean, so casually, like, it's kind of lame, but, like, in a speedrun, I love when you can just set up a boss and it's like, Alright, well, I win now. Um, I, I live for these kinds of threats. Animals are dumb. Animals are dumb. Not the suit! Anything but the suit! Yeah, the monkeys just go absolutely to town. Unfortunately, the monkeys don't do any damage, but they keep them in a sort of knockback animation, which yeah. can be helpful for avoiding damage. So I'm also... Oh, he, he got uh, Tilt the Towers going right now. Um, I pay attention to like how quickly he's trying to charge me as well, and just try to keep a wall or a monkey between me and him as, as possible, because if you go too close to the wall, he can sometimes hit you through it. So you need to watch your spacing a little bit. And just play it more than anything, play it safe. Because if you don't, uh, bad things happen. <laughs> so, um, I, I imagine, like, in a regular playthrough of this game, you'd be a lot higher than level 5. Yeah, you'd be like level you, you, 18. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, you you described what you described sounded like, like hours of gameplay, so. Yeah. Um, so, and keep in mind, the damage output that I'm doing is with level 5. We do this fight on level 4. We have even less oh, damage yeah. output. Oh, dang it, I died. Um, see, that's why you gotta be careful. He kicked me through the wall. Um... Yeah. 
When you die during the boss, does it put you like all the way back at the beginning? At the start or of the does fight. It keep... Start of the fight. Oh jeez. Yeah. Yep. That's why you gotta be careful. And sometimes when you're loading in the load screen, sometimes it'll just take damage too. There should be a health pickup over here as well. Um, I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna take this open though before I go look for it. The skunks are no matter what the skunks are gonna be on a cooldown. Um, so I'm just taking opportunities as I can get them. And again, he can only take damage when he's hit by the radioactive skunk goo. See how he charged me there? And he was like trying to shoulder check me there? That's something you gotta be careful there. You gotta kind of watch your six there. If you start to see like that after image, he might be trying to do that charge attack and that's a really easy way to die. That's actually kind of similar to what happened to me. Yeah, there's a roll of toilet paper you can take. I don't think that's enough to actually give me an extra hit. Um, that's why I apologize if I'm not keeping my controller super in frame, but you don't really need it as much now that we're through all of like the... Yeah, my gold split for this is like seven minutes flat. This is a long fight, so. Get off for me. A little boring to some, but I, I still think the cheese is really funny. Like, like you said, Church. <laughs> I, I, I love cheese like this. It's just seven minutes of Gouda. It's great. Oh yeah, see how he tried to charge me there? You gotta be really careful yeah. even when you're trying to, you know. Not this suit. Anything but this suit. Obviously, when you're going for like a world record, you gotta play risky. Um, but you gotta be really, really careful. He can, even if, even behind the safety of the wall, he can really mess you up if you're not careful. Get off of me! It's also just kind of the thing, like, you, you wanna play a little safer when you're starting, just so you, like, you can kind of see, I guess, like, not his patterns, but just, like, his... Behavior. Um, beha yeah, his behavior. You can see, you know, like if there's any tells on when you need to be careful or anything like that. Also, you don't, you don't want to lose a run when you're starting. You you want to get the uh, run to an end. Yeah. Yeah, generally speaking as well, you want to keep them away from these, like, octagonal pillars. I think they're octagons. You can hit them through them, but it's a little bit tricky. You just want to keep them as close to the wall as possible. And if you're lucky, you can get a monkey to keep him closer to the wall. Yeah, I'm kind of moving back and forth so I can manipulate the CEO here to be closer. Um, this is the CEO of Genron, by the way. He doesn't like animals. Like, the whole lore with this bot, like, with the CEO, is, like, he, like, tests on animals because he hates animals. Like, that's it. <laughs> Not even for the money or for the scientific advances, but... He just really hates animals. It's very strange. That's... Yeah, that's a motive, I guess. So because he's getting kind of cornered in by those monkeys there, that's when I know to move so that I can get him unstuck. Because the monkeys can actually push him away from the wall as well. As you see see right there how like he's getting like absolutely clobbered by the monkeys. Sometimes you just yeah. have to lose openings in order to get him better positioning on the wall. Because you really don't want to risk clipping back out of back in bounds. But if you do, you can just do the same method I was showing you earlier. See now the monkeys yeah, are so in a really good spot. Sorry? I was gonna say, like, at least on this one, like if you clip back in bounds, it's not super difficult to get back out. Yeah, just make sure you practice quad jumping. Uh, most of the time he won't bother you in the corner, but the faster you get it, the more uh, likely you can get him to an easier to minute position. So now I'm backing off a little bit because the monkeys are kind of getting in and around him a little bit. Sometimes, even if like he's in a good spot, sometimes you have to move him a little bit um, just because of the skunks, uh, because of the... So all of these glass walls are supposed to disappear during the fight, casually. But because we glitched the game and skipped uh, several of the phases, they don't despawn. So sometimes the skunks can uh, fail to path around them properly. 
Um, so sometimes it's a concern just to like move around a little bit, just so you can get the, the skunks to find an easier path to navigate to the CEO there. Yeah, so like here, for example, I'm going to try to manip them a bit more this way. See if I can't get that skunk off the back wall or something like that. Sometimes as well, if like both skunks are stuck, um, or like one of the skunks is consistently stuck, you can end like your final hit of your opening with a, with a strong attack to force him to do like this get up attack. And so he'll do like that. And that can sometimes force the AI on uh, the skunk and the monkeys to get off of him. And that can help you reposition him a bit as well. Um, and if he just kind of stands still, just tap him. Oh yeah, see how he, he kind of almost did like the nothing personnel? Um, yeah, that's what you gotta be careful about. But now because I've moved him a little more over to the right, he's a little bit more likely to get pushed by the monkeys. Ooh, okay. He's tilted like that, you gotta be a little bit careful. And you see, now the other skunk is starting to get a little bit more involved with things. Um, because I did... That's also why you want to get rid of uh, the extra furnishings around the place. Is because it makes it a bit easier for the skunks to add to the boss. Yeah, so I didn't get much of an opening there. The monkeys are kind of causing some bedlam here. Um, so I might do the strong attack thing again in order to get them off of him. That helped a little bit, but I can get the full combo. Okay, he's tilted towers. This might kill him? Uh... Yeah, okay, he's in a lot better position now. Good. Sometimes you can throw strong attacks in there in order to get him better positioning. That's a great spot. Alright, and then time is on final hit. So as soon as you see the cutscene, that's time. And then he falls like a James Bond movie through this. Did you know that weasels and rabbits, rabbits are natural, natural enemies, enemies in the wild? No. I'm fired. I'm fired. All right, and that's it. And that's it. That's how you speedrun Whiplash, everybody. Uh, not to be confused with the movie of the same name about drumming. Um... But yeah, that's how you do the final boss. Um, didn't get as owned as I thought I would, so that's a good sign, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah, for the, sure, yeah. Yeah, and the animals are gonna go live in space now, along with the nurse, who has like a love affair with one of the other monkeys at some point. And this game's lore is hilarious. You should really, at a minimum, if, it, if, if this showcase has inspired you to do anything, please let it be to at least try this game casually, either through PS2 or Xbox. This game rocks. It's really good. I actually really do recommend playing it. It's not just like a weird mean game. I mean, this is the people who brought you Gex, so you know it's gotta be good, right? Um, but yeah, I've been Jaxler. I hope this tutorial was really helpful and hope this kind of clarified things for people or at least gives people um, a little bit of an easier time of getting into their strong than it was for me when I first started. Because when I first started, there was nothing. So, Church, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Thank you for the platform and the opportunity to uh, get this tutorial out in front of more eyeballs. So, thanks a bunch. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, you know, happy to have uh, you on the show. I, you know, it's one of one of the the best things about the show is having you know passionate, uh, enthusiastic speedrunners, you know, come on and you know teach games that they're passionate about or that they you know they just like a lot so it's it's awesome to be able to have you on um do you do, while we're still on the topic of the run do you have any um like just general tips for either speedrunning this game in general uh like a broad terms or just speedrunning in general uh for anybody who might just be starting off um i would say um god willing for, uh, for game-specific stuff, pra obviously practice your triple jumps and your quad jumps. Um, but just focus on getting that triple jump down. And a big general tip, again, I said it before, I'll say it again. Always hold down the A button when you jump, because uh, it gets you higher jumps, for the most part. Um, I guess in terms of like general speedrunning advice, um, just something I'll kind of say with this game. This game's really hard, so if you're having a lot of trouble with stuff, don't beat yourself up over it. This is a pretty, pretty tough game. This game, I mean, obviously I didn't have the same resources. Um, 
as like we do now, but like when I started running this game, it took me three weeks just to do my first run. And I'm someone who's been speedrunning for about six or seven years now. Um, yeah. But I'll tell you what, this game is super satisfying to run. Um, any what I always say to people, because um, a lot of people I think kind of are like, oh, there's no way I could ever do that. Anyone can do what I just showed you. The only difference between a top level speedrunner and like someone who's just getting in is time and willingness to commit. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. Um, and honestly, um, another thing as well, uh, and uh, you know, like I love this game, right? But this might not be the game for you. And you might play this game and love it casually, and you try the speedrun, and you're just like, you know, this is too hard for me, or I'm not ready for this yet, or, you know, maybe this isn't just my type of speedrun. It is okay to come to that realization. You're not a quitter. You're not, like, a bad speedrunner. Not every game is for every speedrunner. There, there, honestly, the reason I even picked up this game is because I was, you know, learning Gexen or to Gecko. And I was, part of it was hard, but I was also like, this is just not for me, so... I tried something different, so I found this game because this was in their library, and now I'm a lot happier, and I'm doing something that I enjoy. That's the big thing: is you know, make sure you're doing this because you find it fun. The moment, like, obviously, you know, it's not going to be all sunshine and roses all the time, but like, yeah, when you get to the point where you're realizing like this just doesn't fulfill you anymore, that's when you need to stop. And be okay with having that conversation with yourself. I think that's really important. I don't think that's something... I think the mental side of speedrunning is something a lot of people don't talk about. Um, so, I, like, For listen sure, yeah. to your listen to your mind, listen to your body, put your health first. Um, I guess as a... This is kind of, like, not even remotely related, but, like, I'm here as well. You know, I'm a human being. Don't feel afraid to reach out to other speedrunners. We are nerds who want to share this stuff with as much people as possible. I know it's like, you know, like, oh, this person's been speedrunning forever, you know, it's like, oh, I feel scared. Don't! We want more friends. <laughs> We're as yeah, socially awkward as you think you probably are, but you're probably less socially awkward than we are. We are, okay? Come talk to us! Yeah, like that. So that's one of the that's one of the big things. And so not every community is going to be like that. Um, I recognize that. You know, they're not all perfect. But a lot of speedrunning communities just want more people to run their games. Like, yeah. Um, a lot. Pretty much every as every uh, community that I've had on, as far as I'm aware, is like super. You know, like, hey, please come play this game. We'd love to have you. You know, like a lot of the of the people. Uh, that I know are like, yes, I'd, I'd love people to play this game. So, like, not every community is going to be like that, but you'll usually be able to find a community that's willing to help you, willing to help you learn, you know, and is just happy to see somebody else, um, you know, playing their game. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, for this game specifically, uh, like, like I said, I'm really the only person actively running right now. There's a couple other people interested, um, but haven't really started to, like, work on it quite yet. Um, we just made a Discord for this game. There wasn't one before, because like I said, the only other person who ran this, ran this like seven years ago. Um, um, Ruik, if you're out there, come hang. Come talk to us. Um, but <laughs> um, All's good, all's good. Um, but if you go to speedrun.com slash whiplash, um, you can find a link to our Discord, and that also has the rules for the speedrun as well, so it's like, oh, here's how we start timers, so uh, if like you're having trouble setting up the live split stuff, you can let us know there. I can link a copy of my splits there as well if people are interested. And that's the easiest way I can direct you to our Discord group as well. It's pretty bare bones, because like I said, we like just made it. Because um, this game recently just kind of picked back up. Um, but we'd be happy to welcome you there. Um, but yeah, uh, consider running the game. Uh, if you're just here just to have a good time, I hope you had a great evening. Uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, Again, if you have any further questions, just reach out to me. I'm super open to stuff like that. So just shoot me a DM if you're struggling with stuff, and or just post in our Discord. And there will be people who, you know, it's not just me. There might be other people who might be able to look at the gameplay footage, too. Um, but yeah, um, I don't think I have too much more to say other than that. Other than, again, thank you for the platform and the opportunity. I'm very grateful. Um, yep. If you want to see more of me running this game, and I, I tend to stick to the weird stuff. Because I think the weird games are the like the like the best kept secrets in speedrunning. Um, if you want to see more stuff like that, I stream. Uh, Jaxler once my Twitch channel. 
Um, I also, you can also hit me up on Twitter at JaxlerSR if that's an easier way, if you need help as well. So just hit me up in like DMs or something like that. Cool. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, again, thank you so much for, uh, you know, being on the show, teaching the game. Uh, that is all we have uh, for tonight. Um, just before we go, though, I uh, just want to remind everybody. Uh, so uh, this isn't the only speedrunning content we have. We do have shows uh, pretty much daily, uh, and that is including uh, tomorrow. We actually have one of our three new shows starting. Uh, so tomorrow is going to be What's Faster, followed by our new show, Grudge Match, is first episode. That's going to be starting here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and uh, if you want to learn about all of our other shows and our other two new shows, you can go to games.quick.com slash hotfix. Um, besides that, we're going to take just a quick break while we look for somebody to raid. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind sticking around just to help, uh, you know, cheer on somebody else doing a speedrun, that would be amazing. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for watching.